Hi, my name is Cindy Farr and I'm the Incident Commander for the Missoula City County Health Department's COVID-19 response. Today is Wednesday, July 1st, and this is my daily briefing. To date, we've had 98 cumulative positive COVID-19 cases in Missoula County. That's up six from yesterday. 95 of those cases were identified by testing and three were epi-linked. We've had 47 recoveries and one death, leaving us with 50 active cases in the county and 295 close contacts. Active cases and their known contacts are in quarantine and isolation and will continue to be monitored and supported by staff as needed. The state of Montana is reporting 1,016 cumulative COVID cases, of which 336 are active, with 50 new cases reported today in 15 counties across the state. There are currently 14 hospitalizations across the state, including two people in Missoula County hospitals that are not Missoula County residents, and there have been 22 deaths in Montana related to COVID-19. So the state reached a COVID milestone today, surpassing more than 1,000 cumulative cases. In Missoula County, we're continuing to see active cases rise along with close contacts. So this morning, I'd like to revisit some epi terms that are important to understanding COVID-19 and how we respond to it. I'll also share a reminder about how the health department handles personal confidential health information and what identifying close contacts from a cluster looks like. First, let's visit some terms like ep epidemic, outbreak, cluster, and pandemic. So an epidemic refers to an increase often sudden in the number of cases of a disease above what's normally expected in a population. An outbreak carries the same definition as an epidemic, but outbreak is used, often used for a more limited geographical area. For instance, there was a pertussis outbreak in, a, in Missoula County schools last year. There was a sudden increase in the number of pertussis cases across the diversity of schools with numbers of active pertussis cases exceeding what is typically expected in that environment. Now a cluster refers to an aggregate of cases that are grouped in a place and time that are suspected to be greater than the number expected, even though the expected number may not be known. Kind of like COVID, it's new, so we don't quite know yet what a typical number of cases would look like in that environment and in the community. I know that sounds confusing, so let's break it down a little bit more. When there's a group of people connected to a single event or place at a specific time, there's an opportunity for a cluster to form. Say, for instance, we go to a family reunion that we used as an example in prior briefings. All of those people arriving at the family reunion are connected by the event, the place, and the time that they spent together. So if one family member happens to have COVID-19, perhaps they're asymptomatic at the reunion and then they develop symptoms after the fact, ideally they share information about all of their close contacts with the public health nurses for case investigation and contact tracing at the time of their positive result. If and when those close contacts are tested and they then test positive for COVID-19, we would term the group connected to that initial case at that event, place, and time as a cluster. Finally, a pandemic refers to an epidemic that has spread over several countries or continents, usually affecting a large number of people. This, of course, is what we've been experiencing and will continue to experience for some time with COVID-19. So now that we've run through some of those basic terms, I'd like to return to another important matter closely related to COVID-19, case investigation and contact tracing. Let's just remember that this is a health-related matter and therefore there's a certain level of information that has been and will be protected to ensure that patient privacy and confidentiality are maintained. Let's jump to another example, one that's a generic representation of what we are seeing in our community. Earlier this week, Ellen related that we are spreading the novel coronavirus to those people who have been closest to family, friends, and coworkers, or people connected to our work. This makes sense. Let's say someone from a workplace tests positive for COVID-19. The health department contacts that organization, informing them of a positive case within the workplace so that management can determine how to move forward by ensuring safety across their staff and across internal environments. This also gives the organization the heads up that the health department will be confidentially contacting folks that were identified as close contacts, evaluating them for their level of risk, and then moving them into testing if needed. Let's say that there's a positive case from a workplace that a lot of people are coming and going from the general public, like a restaurant. The health department goes through the same process of notifying the management or owner of the case, including what to expect moving forward. An establishment or organization is treated the same way as an individual. The health department doesn't share 
personally identifiable information that could potentially connect case information to a specific person or a specific location or business. This does not preclude an organization or workplace from publicly sharing that information. That is their prerogative. We've seen a few establishments make those public announcements within the past week. Now, sometimes the organization just wants to get the message out to the community and handle it on their own. Other times, the organization might need additional assistance identifying all of the, pers the possible contacts at a given time. Again, this makes sense. In a busy restaurant environment, it's much more difficult to identify specific diners, servers, etc. at specific time windows. If and when this happens, organizations work collaboratively with the health department to elevate their message and share out information specific to the risk, including things like specific dates and times. And sharing info like that more broadly casts a wider net, helping everyone in the investigation and tracing effort to more fully reach all the possible contacts. We did this last Friday in collaboration with Paradise Falls when they we released a press release announcing um, indicating the specific dates and time of exposure so that the general public would have more information to better assess if they were at risk. That message was picked up by media, social media, and then passed along by word of mouth, which helped everyone involved form a broader audience to better identify all of the close contacts. We don't anticipate COVID-19 slowing down at this point. We're seeing an increase in cases across the United States, across the state of Montana, and here in Missoula County. The cases indicate that we are affecting those closest to us, those that we probably care about the most and are spending the most time with. We're seeing families, friends, and workplaces affected. So please keep this in mind as a reminder to revisit your safe behaviors, including safety in the environments in which you are working or visiting. Continue putting that mask on for safety. This is one thing that can go a long, long way towards protecting other people from asymptomatic exposure and transmission. We've seen how a cluster can have many, many close contacts, so it is really important to try and keep your social circles small at this point. So that's it for my daily briefing. Um, thanks to everybody out there for doing your part to help us control this pandemic. Um, as always, you can subscribe to me on YouTube under my name, Cindy Farr, that's C-I-N-D-Y-F-A-R-R. -R. Click that little notification bell so that you can get notified when additional videos are uploaded. Follow us on Facebook. We put lots of great information there under the Missoula City County Health Department. You can call 258-INFO if you would like to schedule a test for COVID-19 if you're having any symptoms or if you just want general information um, on COVID-19. And you can check out our website at missoula.co slash cvirus. So until tomorrow, everybody, stay healthy.